you were nothing before this podcast. You were a bluebird. You were a brownie. You were a Girl Scout cookie. That's just the facts. (laughs) (laughs) It's the one thing I do know. (laughs) I couldn't even do a good Heather Chandler impression if I tried. TBH. She's iconic. I think she's probably one of my favorite bitchy characters. Like, zero remorse. No soul at all. Yeah, correct. This is the swamp. (laughs) (laughs) This is the swamp. The swamp is an acronym. It stands for some whack ass movie podcasting. My name is Dara. I'm Emily. I'm the sleepy co host. Um, <laughs> it's the second week in a row we have a sleepy co host. Yeah, I didn't take a nap in the middle of this movie. I took a nap right after. <laughs> <laughs> now we're recording. <laughs> Did you have some like really eerie dreams? I feel like this movie would send me into like a. No, I like like the dream that Veronica has where she's yeah, with the spaghetti. At... <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish that'd be like a really aesthetically like tight dream. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, get your head shoved into a, like a cauldron of spaghetti yeah no not it, ideal it could be worse i just um, woke up sweating <laughs> yeah, right i'm always sweaty when i nap too right so today anyways we are doing another installment of our gaslight gatekeep girl mo- girl boss themed month <laughs> and this is i mean there are so many ways to like put that theme but i found when i'm like perusing on letterboxd for all the movies we've done so far it's always on people's playlists that are called like female joker (laughs) or like this is my (laughs) like like the joker for ladies (laughs) i love that good for her movies is another one uh, that i've just Uh like everything we've done so far but so we're doing heathers today i think this is absolutely falls under the gaslight gatekeep girl boss theme we got this requested a lot, and so I'm glad we finally found somewhere to, like, stick it in. Yeah, every time somebody requested it, I was like, fuck. Like, we, like this is one of my favorite movies. I can't, I honestly mm. can't believe it's taken us this long to get around to it. And so, since so many people wanted us to do it, I was really happy that it fit so good with our theme this uh-huh. month. And I was pumped to watch it. I feel like I watch this movie, like, at least every three months. It's definitely one that I circle back around to so much. Um, it's just, oh, it's so good. It's one of those I can quote it along with it. Like, I could probably yeah. verbatim do the whole movie. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember it's like like when you're in early high school and you first watch it for, like, the first time. And, and then you're like, like oh, everyone... this is fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me gently with a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Great wow. pate, Mom, but I got a motor if I'm going to make it to that funeral on time. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I will die on the hill that this is probably one of the most quotable movies i'd say you're all, like ever like this is like the it just has all the best like one-liner like zippy one-liner dialogue bits uh-huh um, like i love my dead gay son or you it doesn't get any better than that i'm sorry we should have i don't want we okay we couldn't have actually done this for musicals month but there is a musical based on this yes, movie i was gonna it, ask you if you've ever listened to it oh yeah i was i had a big phase for it mm-hmm. like later it, in high school <laughs> It was, no, I, like, not that long ago, uh, Uh a friend, a musical lover friend uh, suggested to me, and I didn't even know, because it's off-Broadway. Yeah. It was, like, never actually on Broadway, but it's on Spotify, I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. I would guess it's probably on Apple Music, too. If you like this movie, I cannot recommend the musical enough. It tells, uh, like, it's the same story, but it's altered in ways that honestly gives the characters, like, more depth to me like Mm -hmm. i actually find a lot of the character arcs in the musical a lot more rewarding than in the film because i think the film is very focused on like visual aesthetics and again like those zippy one-liners and like the funny dialogue Uh and that is good for a film but i think the way they translate it to a musical so fucking brilliant It almost feels like the film knew it was trying to be a cult classic, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But no, I totally agree with you about the musical. I think you get a lot of, like, a a better story arc for Veronica, because, like, you sort of, like, see her before she's popular, almost, and you get a little bit more history there, um, which I really like. But in this movie, it pretty much starts off with, like, she's friends with the worst girls in school and they're all named heather yeah right and you're kind of like why like i i do like the musical for that reason because it kind of gives like some context as to why she actually is hanging out with them whereas in the movie i'm like you fucking hate them why were you ever even friends with them in the first place like literally their names are all heather why are you friends with them your name's veronica you just by by process of elimination you simply just don't belong here you can't fit 
just won't work. But we should probably give a bit of a recap. Um, I would hope that a lot of you have seen this movie um, at this point. I think it's pretty iconic. I would definitely say cult classic like you said. I think it was so ahead of its time that it was like making fun of teen rom-coms that hadn't even been made yet. You know what I mean? Like it was it was like very satirical by nature like it was they were purposely trying to make fun of a lot of like coming of age high school movies yeah but it was just so far before that genre like really boomed like it was happening while it would have made so much sense for this movie to come out in 1998 yeah like like a deck a whole decade later Mm -hmm. like this feels just really the fact that it's a 1988 film really like kind of surprised me because um, no, it like, feels a lot later than that. Yeah, right? This is, like, almost, like, the opposite of a John Hughes movie. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I thought no, was No, because that's what they were, like, trying to kind of make fun of. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But it was, like, they were happening at the same time. Mm-hmm. But this movie was a total box office failure. I think it like, that doesn't shock just, me. About, just about broke even. It was super unpopular. And then it did take about a decade to the mid to late 90s when it really picked back up again as, like, a cult classic. And I think now it's, at least for, like, young, edgy teen teens, it's certainly, mm-hmm. like, all of me and my edgy teenage friends in eighth grade definitely, like, watched it. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, but so for a little bit of a recap, we kind of already started. Veronica, she's in high school, and she has three friends, Heather, Heather, and Heather, and they're, like, the bitchy girls in school. (laughs) And Veronica's like, yeah, like, I'm also popular and kind of bitchy, but, like, it's not really my cup of tea, Mm -hmm. but, like, I just do it because it's convenient, kind of. (laughs) And then, um, so there's... Each of them has a color theme. Yes. So Veronica is blue, like black and blue, but mostly mm-hmm. blue. And then the three Heathers are red, yellow, and green. Mm-hmm. And they like have very distinct color palettes, their whole outfits. It's very aesthetically pleasing to me. Um, but then so her and her three Heathers, they're at school, and then she there's a new boy at school, JD, and he is mysterious. He's not wearing a trench coat, but you really feel like you should be. Yeah. Yeah, you almost, in your head, you, like, when you think back at it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's a trench coat. He's wearing a trench coat. He wasn't, but it was a trench coat. It was like a, it was like a leather coat that was a little too long, but I was like, oh, you're really, it just could be a trench coat. Yeah. It, but, and his hair, is, like, looks wet, mm-hmm. but it's not on purpose. No. He gives you shooter vibes, and for good reason, right from the jump. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. School shooter vibes, and she's immediately like, oh, I'm infatuated with this boy. Mm-hmm. And they meet again at a, like, a 7-Eleven, like, mm-hmm. a gas station, sort of, where she's picking up snacks on her way to a college party with Heather. And it's kind of insinuated here that Veronica is a little bit new to this friend group, because the main Heather, the red Heather, she's kind of the the Mm -hmm. ringleader of the group she says i'm giving veronica her shot tonight basically Mm -hmm. like to prove herself as like a cool person who can hang out so she brings veronica along with her to this college party and this is her like way to prove herself as being cool or something Mm -hmm. i guess but so she runs into the gas station to get corn nuts (laughs) because i guess they need corn nut corn nuts planer bq bq um, <laughs> but so she runs into him again, he buys her a slushy, and they kind of hit it off. They've got this little romantic entanglement. Mm-hmm. Um, they go to the party. Doesn't, it's gross college guys being gross to underage girls. Mm-hmm. Veronica again. hates it. Yeah, she's not into it. She's like um, begging Heather. She's like, can we please go home? She's like, and then she, no, she throws up. Not. She, she throws up all over Heather's shoes, and Heather secretly loves it because she's like, "This is like gonna be like a nugget of information I can use to like destroy your social reputation, uh-huh. basically." Because everything she, she seems to be like, she's playing chess all the time. Yeah, she's maniacal you know, she's always, for sure, manipulative. Um, and so that's when Heather does this big speech and she slanders Veronica and she's like, "You're a fucking loser. You were nothing before you met me." Yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And so the next morning, Veronica links up with JD. I think he shows up, like, at her window. It's not even the next morning. It's, like, that night, pretty much. He's, like, he leans in through her window and he says, (laughs) Hey, you wanna fuck? (laughs) You wanna play croquet? (laughs) So they fuck outside. 
They what? fuck outside on her parents' lawn after playing strip cocaine, which is the least sexy game I think I can possibly... Strip Connect 4 sounds more sexy than Strip Croquet. Uh-huh. Are you kidding me? I just, like, Strip Shuffleboard. <laughs> strip Bingo. <laughs> could, could do it. It's so funny, because, like, just the idea of, like, fucking on the grass is so yeah. horrific. Also, like, mm. their lawn literally looks like turf. I'm like, could you imagine just getting down <laughs> no. on some turf? Gra- like, grass stains all over your backside. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they fuck, yeah, they fuck in her parents' lawn, and then the next morning he's like, let's go to Heather's house. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, and they go, and they're like, let's pull a sick prank on her. Let's, like, f- make her drink something gross. Uh-huh. And he's like, okay, Drano. <laughs> and Heather's like, haha, you're so crazy. No. Let's just, like, spit into a glass of milk. Uh-huh. And he's like, but Drano. And she's like, oh my god, what if we put orange juice and milk together that'd be so crazy <laughs> right jd and he's like we should actually murder her right now yeah veronica's like no no we shouldn't and so jd switches the cups heather drinks the drano and dies and veronica's like oh my god no and then jd's like but you're really happy about this right and she's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's like yeah i kind of loved this <laughs> <laughs> and he, she's like i just killed my best friend and he goes and your worst enemy. And she goes, same difference. Yeah. So pretty <laughs> much... It's iconic. Yeah. They make it look like a suicide is what ends up happening. Because Veronica has the very quirky and unique talent of being able to forge anybody's handwriting. How this is convenient! <laughs> this is established right from the beginning of the movie where they're having her, like, forge, like, love notes from popular boys to, like, slip onto the, like, not popular girls' lunch tray mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, this is just such a weird, like, niche thing like, to give a character like what the f- who who decided that that should be like her secret skill how do you figure this out about yourself too like forging enough parents <laughs> notes like to get out of school yeah She's right like, like wow I'm, this is literally my mom's handwriting i'm spot on maybe i should exploit <laughs> you ever, this <laughs> do you ever have to get your agenda book signed in like elementary book school where it'd be like oh this is your homework and your parents had to sign your agenda book every night no Oh, that shit was fucking whack. And huh. sometimes I would, and you would get in trouble if they didn't sign it. And you, it would, so sometimes you, if I forgot to ask, I would just like do it myself. Nice. But I guess that could be, if you have to forge your mom's signature on your agenda book. Yeah. Huh. And she like basically gave me permission. She was like, if if I forget to sign it, like just sign it. Like your teacher's not gonna, I was in third grade. I was like, I'm gonna go to jail. <laughs> um. <laughs> Jen, what a fucking G. But they, um, yeah, they make it look like a suicide, and then all of a sudden, everyone at school who used to think that Heather was this huge mega bitch was like, oh my god, she was actually so deep, because mm-hmm. killing yourself means that you have emotions. <laughs> yep. And, <laughs> and then, um, so Veronica's like, shit, now I, like, kind of idolized this person yeah, I hate. She, she's become a martyr. Basically, and so... Then they kind of do it again with these two um, football jock yeah. guys who are also kind of assholes. Veronica kind of gets dragged along on a double date, and it doesn't really go well. JD shows up out of the woods. Yeah, right? Like, he just knew where she was going to be. Um, yeah, he, he'd he have been lurking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so they once again, um, the, the football players start a fake rumor that Veronica sucked both of their dicks at the same time, which I'm like... Honestly, that would just be very impressive. Right, and also, if, if the, like, they're saying that to, like, put her down, but if you're in high school, if you're a junior in high school, and some the most popular boy in school is going around saying that you suck two dicks at once, you should be like, hell yeah, I did. <laughs> But everyone's it's my new secret talent. Her. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone's slut shaming her and they're like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. And she was like, um, okay, I will plot and scheme. She's like, I will simply plot and scheme with my serial killer boyfriend. Uh-huh. And so they come up with this big plot where she's like, Hey Ram, do you actually want to make it a reality? And he's like, Yeah. And they go into the woods and JD once again gaslights Veronica and says that the bullets they're going to use in the gun are ice luge bullets from World War II, which are, like, fake. They're going to break the skin, but they're not going to kill you. And... (laughs) I'm sorry. 
Veronica knew this is, ex- she gets so upset because like afterwards of course both of the football players are fucking dead like the bullets are real like how stupid do you have to be like you knew what you were doing at that point <laughs> she's like this doesn't sit quite right with me but I don't know enough about World War II to dispute you so it sounds good JD <laughs> pick up an encyclopedia Veronica <laughs> Oh my god. And so, yeah, obviously the bullets are real. They end up shooting both of them, and then they stage a double suicide again to make it look like they were gay lovers. <laughs> and they. The and mineral water! <laughs> it, in one of my favorite scenes in this movie, she's like, Do you have the homosexual artifacts? <laughs> and he brings out this, like, bag full of, like, chocolates, lipstick, and they're like, And most importantly, mineral water. <laughs> and she's like, It's come a really long way. And he's like, Yeah, but we're in Ohio. <laughs> Points were made. And so then there's a funeral for the two of them, and we get the iconic line, I love my dead gay son. Mm-hmm. And again, if you have no interest in the musical, go and just listen to the song that's called I Love My it's Dead so Gay Son. It's so fucking that's- funny. It's probably the best one. In the whole musical, yeah. yeah. So even if you're not a musical person, but you enjoy the movie Heathers, go for like the shits and giggles, go listen to that song. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then, now they're like, oh my god, I- I've killed s- a handful of people now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, basically, she's starting to be like, JD, this isn't really working out. Yeah. And he is like, okay, well, I'm going to be, like, abusive and manipulative to you, obviously. Mm-hmm. So he goes behind her back to the green Heather, Heather Do. Yes. I'm going to guess. Uh, and he's like, you're going to be the new top bitch in town. And he gives her the red scrunchie. So now her color palette is red now because she is taking on the Mm -hmm. role as head Heather. And so she kind of steps into the head bitch position and gets all these people to sign a petition, which secretly says that they're all agreeing to commit suicide as a school. Uh And JD um, goes with a bomb. He goes under the school during a pep rally, and Veronica's like, oh my god, this motherfucker's up to something. And so she follows him, she tries to stop him, there's a bit of a kerfuffle scuffle, she gets the bomb to stop working, he straps it to his chest and leaves. I think she's, oh, she shoots his finger off. Yeah. She shoots his middle finger off, which is Iconic. dope as hell. And then she, um... She leaves, JD walks out behind her, blows himself up in front of the school, and then Veronica learns the lesson that friendship is important. Yeah, and that's the movie. Friendship is, yeah, friend, uh, new friends. Be friends with only people that you like. I don't know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know that this message has too much of a, a, a good takeaway <laughs> in this movie. I want to talk about just... How much trauma Veronica is going to have to deal with in the future <laughs> from this? Right. So I was sitting there, I was like, she needs the most expensive, outstanding therapy that she can get. <laughs> like she's gonna be, I'm... she's gonna be one of those ladies that on her deathbed like confesses to like murders yeah. to her nurse kind oh of thing. God. I totally see that. I'd like to think that the the blossoming friendship between her and Martha Dunstock will reverse a lot of damages, but I just don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think the, I don't think there's much that can um reverse <laughs> with movie nights. I don't know. Yeah. I have faith. <laughs> <laughs> like have you ever had like one of, like a dream where someone's died or anything like that? Maybe? No. I okay. <laughs> I had like a dream like not too recent. It was very much like this. Heather's where it was like someone died and it was on my like watch or something like that and then I had to like hide a body or something like that in X Y and Z. But it was the most str- just as a dream, it was the most stressful thing that had happened to me in a long time. I woke up like oh. shaking and like sweating and I was like, "Oh what?" And you have to like sit there and convince yourself you're like, "Okay, that was a dream." I could not imagine actually having, like, being her and being like, yeah, see, I'm just gonna have to deal with the fact that I killed three people. See, in my dreams, I'm always, like, the one getting murdered. It's always like I'm running away from somebody with a knife. It's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I'm like, Emily, I had the weirdest dream about you the other night. <laughs> and you're like, no way, me too. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you start a podcast together is your dreams just start to merge. <laughs> <laughs> like first, step one, your periods sync up. Step two, uh, murder. <laughs> murder dreams. <laughs> So I I think that Veronica is certainly going to have some trust issues going forward in her, in her next romantic relationships. But I do think that the that I've come to the conclusion okay. that the lesson we are supposed to take away from this movie mm-hmm. is that even if he's hot and mysterious and intriguing, when you get those bad vibes, girl, you got to get out of there. Yeah, that's that's what as soon as he the so. We can dive into this a little bit because I don't want to be attracted to Christian Slater. I don't. Everything in me is saying no. <laughs> and yet, I'm here like, we are. Kind of, he can, he can kind of get it though. I'm like, he's in a trench coat and he has wet hair and a single earring, and he's doing a bad Jad- Jack Nicholson impression. And yet, I'm like quaking a little bit. I hate it. I hate myself. Yeah. No. I. I had the same issue while I was watching this. I watched this with my roommate, and I was like, "Smash or pass," and w- smash. and it was like, unfortunately, smash. It's the thing for me that that I can't I can't even say smash is because of his the, the stupid fucking way that he talks. I mm-hmm. hate it. Like if he if he shut the fuck up for the entire <laughs> time. If I didn't he- <laughs> if I didn't hear one fucking word out of his mouth, then fine, I can do it. But the minute he opens his fucking mouth, nope, we're done. I know. it's So that first scene when they're in the cafeteria, and he's, like, slouched over in his little leather jacket. Greetings and, he's and like salutations. Sitting... <laughs> <laughs> but right, I'm like, you see him, and you're like, oh, oh, I'm interested. Uh-huh. And then Veronica goes up to him and asks him the lunchtime poll, which is, you inherit $5 million the same day aliens say they're going to blow up the earth. What do you do? And he was like... I'm just going to take some tequila and my sacks out on a <laughs> rowboat. And, and I was like, why the fuck do I think you're hot? I want to kill myself. Like, that is the most asshole, pretentious thing anyone oh could possibly God. ever say. And yeah, all the, the greetings and salutations. No, cut it out. <laughs> Go to therapy. I, sir. <laughs> that question, though, um, I think is a good question for us to do for this month's um, giveaway. Oh, let's take that. That is a really poll. good one. So our, our yeah, so for our giveaway this month, um, and we'll post this on our Instagram. You can comment, or we'll post a story, and you can reply to it. Um, you're given five million dollars two days before aliens um come to the planet and say they're gonna blow it up. What do you do? So let us know. Yeah, and get real creative with it because the people in the movie have shit fuck answers. <laughs> They're like, I'd give it to Charney. I would give it to my dad, who's a stockbroker. I love that. He's like, my dad's only the best broker in the state. Oh, <laughs> fuck <was> off. Like, <laughs> like dude, come uh, on. But that montage, that montage of Veronica being like, we have to ask people who aren't, like, exactly like us. And they go and they ask, like, the stoners. I love that. And they ask the nerdy kids. I love that little montage uh-huh. right there of them all, like, one of them's, like, calculating. He's like, well, before taxes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other one's, <laughs> which is, one of them's like, yeah, I'll put a bomb in a lion. And so we can both blow up together. <laughs> it's like, that's not a- I pay Madonna to sit on my face. <laughs> I love that. And ride it like the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a really, yeah, that'll be our giveaway question. That's a really yeah. good one. Yeah, I just like hate that I that I think Christian Slater's hot in this movie. Ugh. It makes me, it, like all my mentally ill bitches who are attracted to JD get in the car. <laughs> We're driving off a cliff. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I think definitely when I was younger, I probably would have jumped on that bandwagon with you, but... But it's, like, the self-aware, yeah. like, I'm like, oh, I fucking hate him, yeah. but, like, mm, Yeah, woo-hoo. it's, just, like, he he's very much, like, like, you said the movie's female Joker, but his whole character is very, like, Joker vibes and all that mm, shit. Oh, my God. Ugh. He said something at one point that was basically a paraphrasing of "We live in a society." Oh yeah, he said those words at no, one he point. He fully said, uh, "What was it?" That the high school society, is society, the only place <laughs> fucking a that the popular kids and the nerds can get along together is in heaven. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, <laughs> which I'm he like, didn't stri- 
Are you religious, right? JD? That's what I was gonna say. I was like, he does not strike me as the heaven type. Like, bro, just just say that you want to kill people and yeah, move just, on. Yeah. Admit that you're a psychopath. But there's also a really interesting dynamic between him and his dad because his dad is also a fucking serial yeah. killer. Because his dad basically blows up buildings. As his mm-hmm. job, he's, like, a construction guy who, de- like, demolishes buildings. And there's this whole thing about how JD's mom walked into a building two minutes before it was getting blown up. And she waved him from the window, which maybe it was a suicide. No, now that I think about it. it was. Oh, I thought it was, like, the dad intentionally, like, killed him No, no, I think it's definitely suicide. That's what I always read it as. Because he's a very sinister man. The way oh, he's in yeah. the, that tracksuit. He's very sinister, and his son is very sinister. One of so. one of my roommates also posed this question because they, <laughs> him and him and his son do this weird thing where they like refer to each other, like <laughs> like call me by your name kind of thing, where they've switched roles. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? We're like, J- yeah, yeah. J- where the dad, the dad gets home, and the son says. Hey son, how was school? And he and the dad goes, "Oh, hey pa, how was work?" You know, like yeah. that. I thought that I liked it. I thought that was like quirky. But like it's like is it? <laughs> I don't know. Like I know it's not a kink thing, but it almost like strikes me as a kink thing. <laughs> I don't know how else to talk there's about. A, there's it. a lot to unpack <laughs> with that statement. There's a you are insinuating a lot of things about JD and his dad. <laughs> like I said, I said it strikes me as a kink thing. I don't know. It can yeah. fall under that. Uh, it, qu- quite under that umbrella but you know what i mean nobody nobody is the word daddy so that, exact yes let's be thankful yes. for that <laughs> papa <laughs> papa <laughs> oh my god um but he is literally doing a jack nicholson impression he said it himself he so basically they had cast brad pitt actually for this role and he was that i would have loved he's doing <laughs> And when he was doing the readings and everything, and they're like, you're a great kid, and you're going to have a fine career with or without this movie, and we, so we have to let you go because you just come off as too mm. nice. They're like, even when you're trying to be a like a bad boy yeah. and a dick, like it still comes off as like that kind of genuine, like we don't really get that like possessed by satan yeah. evil energy mm-hmm. from you and so then uh, christian slater just walks up and does a jack nicholson impression and they were like that's it you got it that's the kind of it's a kind of gross slimy trench coat wearing motherfucker we need to play this school yeah. shooter <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> and i guess also um winona ryder she was really passionate about doing this mm. movie and her her publicist her agent her agent begged her to not do hmm. it there, she was like this is gonna ruin your career you'll never work again this movie's gonna be a flop and you know like it's gonna it's gonna paint you in a bad light but i'm like she had just got off of doing Beetlejuice, yeah. and i would say this movie is a little more crass than beetlejuice sure. and sort of maybe but the it, language or the themes but i'm like beetlejuice is still like that same kind of yeah, vein exactly. of like gritty yeah it's definitely in that so same I like, vein i 100 percent agree um, um, but it was because she was in this movie that she got the opportunity to audition for Edward really? Scissorhands because um, same yeah same producer. Mm. So the producer liked her so much in this. I guess um, she was fifteen in this movie, which is fucking. Oh my crazy. god! Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder was fifteen when they filmed this, and I guess everyone, all of her co-stars who were. Like, I know Christian Slater was 19. I know the other Heathers were all around yeah. 18, 19. And, like, even the adults, they're like, when she is in front of that camera, she's a fucking star. They're like, she's the best. She's the most professional, poised, talented actor in this whole room. And it, there's no doubt about it. Like, every single person was like, holy shit, working next to her was fucking oh, yeah. intimidating. And so I guess the producer really was like, oh, she's, she's so right for this and kind of nudged her on to do Edward Scissorhands, love which is that. pretty cool. Absolutely love that. Huh. I, that's just crazy to me that she was literally 15 years old. Remember when they used to cast teens as teens? Yeah, right. I know one of the Heathers is 23 and she lied and said she was 19 yeah. to get the role. It was the, 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 the other the, blonde. Um, the blonde one. Yeah, the yeah. yellow. The mm-hmm. one wears yellow. Um, we're back at it again with another chocolate or vanilla interim special 
a segment hosted by my mother, Jen. Jen, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I am superb. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And um, chocolate or vanilla is a game of your own invention where you give us two options and we all say which one we like better. It's very complex, highly, very (laughs) cerebral. I'm uh, not sure if everyone here is difficult to understand. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So does this week's have a theme? It does. It does. So because Heather's was made into a musical, which a lot of people probably don't know, right? We talked. We talked about that. It was the first thing we were both like. The musical, so we're yeah. both big fans. So yeah. this this is um, movies turned musicals versus books turned movies. Okay, so repeat this: movies turned musicals or musicals turned movies, um, or or either. probably both. Yeah, both. So book to movie versus musical to movie. Okay, yes. okay, yes. okay. Yeah, I, I feel you. I f- All right. Um, so chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Um, mean Girls or The Notebook? Mean Girls. I really like The Notebook, I'll be honest. (laughs) It's, like, embarrassing to say, but I really like The Notebook. Yeah, you're turning a little red. You're like... Yeah. (laughs) No one tell anyone about this, but I'm going to say The Notebook. I would say it, it like, depends on what kind of mood you're in, right? You know? Mm -hmm. But but, um, I would pick Mean Girls. Um, School of Rock or Lord of the Rings? Oh my god, when you, you said School of Rock, and I was like, there's no way she says anything that I'm going to pick <laughs> over School of Rock, but I, I will be picking Lord of the Rings. It's just, if you just compare them at a base level of, Lord of the Rings just wins every category, <laughs> I'm sorry. The only thing that Lord of the Rings would make Lord of the Rings better is if Jack Black was in it, but you can't, ha- you can't have it all. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> Um, I don't think it's any secret that I have not seen Lord of the Rings, so by default, I'm going to have to say School of Rock. All right, um, I will say Lord of the Rings. Um, although, fun story, we watched it when we had no power, and, like, so the generator could just do, like, the TV and, like, one light or whatever, uh-huh. and we watched the whole thing. That was really It's because we had them on DVD. Yeah. We, like, didn't have cable, so, we, so obviously I have the box set. Yeah. Like, it's the only thing to do in that scenario. And I just had no idea it was so amazing. Um, you should you should watch it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. been on my list of things to do for ages. So yeah. it's a time commitment for sure. Exactly. <laughs> um, West Side Story or Twilight? Twilight. I'm sorry, but it's got to be Twilight. Yeah, for sure, Twilight. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, Sound of Music or Perks of Being a Wallflower? Oh my God, this is like like you're picking like a timeless classic versus <laughs> like something that I was really into when I was thirteen. So it's putting you in a hard spot. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess just for the culture, I'll say Sound of Music. Um, but I was a big Perks fan back in back in the day. I have always been a big uh, Sound of Music person, so I'm gonna have to stick with that me too sound of music for the sweep um rent or dune oh my god that's so so funny i watched dune last night i watched the uh the old one how'd you like it i watched it recently horrible i (laughs) it didn't understand like a half of it right (laughs) the the stupidest boringest movie Uh like beautiful costumes amazing set design and i just couldn't be bothered to pay attention or care Mm -hmm. It just really lost me. Um, I'm excited for the new one, but it's gotten some mixed reviews from the people who got the early screener, so we'll have to see how it uh, how it holds up. But I'm going to pick, what was my other option? Uh, rent. Or, oh, yeah, I'll pick Rent. Here's my thing, and this is probably a hot take. I kind of hate Rent. <laughs> I never <laughs> liked it. The music didn't do it for me. Um, I watched like half of the movie and then said I quit, kind of like how I did with La La Land. Um, so I'm going to go with Dune just because I didn't love the original one, but it was kind of entertaining and Zendaya's in the new one. So that has to have some merit. (laughs) They're going to make Zendaya wear blue contacts. So we'll, we'll see. (laughs) I'll take rent. I'll take rent. Of course I'll take rent. (laughs) Evan Hansen or a Divergent? <laughs> oh my god. Dear Evan Hansen is just on a, pa- a deep, dark pathway to something I don't want to crack into. Mm-hmm. So I'll pick Divergent because uh, we love a teen dystopian fiction series in this house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, similar to Rent, um, I fucking hate Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> it's very depressing. 
depressing. It just, it didn't feel like there was ever a good message there. No one had any good takeaways. It just felt, it just felt icky to me. I left a bad taste in my mouth, and now with the new one and Ben Platt being 27 years old, <laughs> portraying a 16-year-old, I can't take it. Um, yeah, no thank you. So I'll, I'll go with um, Divergent, because yeah. I did read all of those books. Me too, me too. Um, Grease or the color purple? The color purple. I just don't think you can compare those two things even a little bit. Okay. Here- Are you going to say Grease? I'm sorry. Just, I'm, no, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for shaming you. No, 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 no. Shame me for not having seen the color purple. Oh, oh. okay, yeah. Which feels no. like I want to choose it, but I, ha- I, and I, I'm sure that once I watch it, I'll be like, damn, I should have chose the color purple. But I just haven't. I just seen don't it. know why. In Greece, why does the car fly into the sun at the it's end? Fun. If someone can, if, if somebody answer me that, and maybe I'll consider. Also, if we're talking about 47-year-olds playing high schoolers, Grace is the worst offender of all. But at least they were all 47-year-olders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. Like, li- 47-year-olders? Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you seen that they're literally, like, like I, giving um, D.R. Evan Hansen, like, the Irishman treatment and, yes. like, de-aging yeah. Ben Platt's face? I love yeah, that. Yeah, they're putting the baby Snapchat filter on him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll stick with Grease. Yeah, I'm actually going to say Grease, too. I loved Grease back in the day. Um, <laughs> Chicago or Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants? <laughs> <laughs> Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. I actually am working on a screenplay called Sisterhood of the Traveling Diva Cup, <laughs> where it's the same story, but it's set in 2021, and there's a fun little menstrual twist to it, if you can guess. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be putting your ideas like this out on the podcast for someone to steal. They're just <laughs> that was a joke. I'm not writing a screenplay. If somebody out there wants to write my screenplay, Sisterhood of the Traveling Diva Cup, please. The rights are yours. My goodness, I would love to watch that movie. Um, but uh, see, I loved that Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants when I was a child. But hold on, what was my other option? Uh, Chicago. Uh, yeah, I, I I can't. The only thing I can say ab- that was offensive about Chicago was casting Richard Gere and having him sing. Um, but it's good. It's so good beyond that. So I'll stick with Chicago. Um, I will also take Chicago. Um, Aladdin or I am number four. Okay, here's the thing. This is another gem. I wasn't going to do any like, repeats. I tried to do no repeats. I'm like, I, I got to put I am number four in there. This is another gem <laughs> thing that is just like, it's one of those things that they only kept writing the books because you were buying them. So they were like, I I, uh, I am number 27. It's out just for you, Jen. We only printed one copy. You said um, we love a dystopian teen novel in this house. And Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Not all teen dystopian novels are created equal. Yeah, that's Um, like the one that I didn't read. (laughs) So good. Yeah, nobody but my mom read it. I think I I read it because I was forced to, I think. (laughs) Um, (laughs) What was my other Uh, choice? Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah, I guess I'll, yeah, I'll pick Aladdin. Yeah, I'll have to go with Aladdin. Well, I will take I am number four for the win. (laughs) Um, Lion King or Fight Club? Lion King. Yeah, Lion King. Yeah, Lion King too. Um, Kinky Boots or Hunger Games? A lot of team dystopian this week, Jen. I love it. You were in a mood. You were in a mood. I will say the Hunger Games. I've never seen Kinky Boots. Um, The movie or the musical. Musical's great. Um, I haven't seen the movie, but I think that I read the Hunger Games like like trilogy at least five times over <laughs> when I was in before. like the eighth grade, so I I have to say the Hunger Games. Oh, I'll, I'll go with the Hunger Games too. Uh, Dream Girls or Goldfinch? Ah, oh, see, the Goldfinch movie was shit garbage, but I've actually never seen Dream Girls. But I do listen to the soundtrack in my car a lot, so mm. I'll pick Dream Girls. Did you ever try and read the Goldfinch, like the book? I read it. It was really good. The book was a hundred times better than the movie, which I know yeah. people like always say about every book, but this book, it was really, really, really true. Well, the movie also just happened to be exceptionally bad. Yeah. But I the got, book was actually pretty good. I got like like, like a fourth of the way through it, and then I kind of just stopped for some reason. So, uh, Not to spoil, but somebody says to me, I don't want to read it because it, it starts really slow. And I'm like, 
the no, it Met, doesn't. The Met blew up in the first two pages. Like, why would you say it starts slow? No, like, it doesn't. It doesn't start slow. I think. I think after that, like, I, it's hard to like follow up. You know yes. what I mean? Maybe um, that's more what they meant. <laughs> but dude, I don't know. But um, I'll go with Dream Girls. All right, I will. Uh, I'll take Dream Girls also. Um, Legally Blonde or Princess Bride? Oh, Legally Blonde. Yeah, Legally Blonde for sure. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Princess Bride. I just can't pick something that has Jennifer Coolidge in it versus something that doesn't have Jennifer Coolidge in it. True. These are just the rules in which I live my life. That's by. fair. I don't think anyone could blame you. I think everyone should live by that. <laughs> Um, so that is all. Well, thanks. this is a good one. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank th- you. Thanks for coming on this week. Yeah. It's really making me think I need to go. It's making me think that you both need to go watch The Color Purple. <laughs> yeah, is what I'm thinking. <laughs> no, I do. What should I watch first, The Color Purple or all of the Lord of the Rings movies? <laughs> They're both. The Color Purple is also like a three hour long movie. Oh my so, god! You know, take your pick. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll watch like one or two of like the Lord of the Rings ones, and then I'll just throw it like throw in a mix of the color purple in the middle <laughs> as an intermission, intermission. a little exactly. intermission. That'd, that'd be pretty good, actually. <laughs> but so the fashion in this movie is fucking it's outstanding. So good. I'll say it. I can Nick. So many good Halloween costumes right. you can do from this movie too. Like any. Any degree of, like, if there's three of you, you can be Heathers, the yeah. three Heathers. If there's four of you, you can be the Heathers and Veronica. The, everyone just has such an iconic yeah. look. I'd like so to see good. someone as, and, like, um, Veronica at the end of the movie after JD's yes! literally blown himself up in front of her. That picture is so iconic. I know it's used in so many memes where it's, like, I don't know, like, me after whatever. And it's her just, like, with soot on her face and her hair is a mess and i'm like i, I feel that that's how i, feel I always sometimes. thought it was so funny that she first of all she just watches this man blow up goes about her day <laughs> no but two how did she know what the blast radius on that thing was gonna be <laughs> like she's just standing well, there she does. she's like all right guess i'm gonna watch him blow up like, ten feet away. She does mention, she mentions earlier in the movie that she had, like, genius-level IQs as a kid and how they wanted to put her, um, like, into high school when she was in, like, third grade or something, but her parents said, like, no, that's gonna be bad for your social adjustment. This is a conversation they have after they fuck on the croquet course. I totally missed that. I and think so, I, was, I was thinking about so, yeah, fucking like, on the grass and how uncomfortable that would be. <laughs> But she was like, yeah, I have this genius IQ, but they, like, didn't want to push me through to, like, skip a bunch of grades. So now I use my genius IQ to choose what color lip gloss to wear. And so maybe Veronica (laughs) did the math. She did the physics problem in her head of, like, if... Okay, ready? This is how it would be, like, on on the SATs. If JD is wearing seven sticks of dynamite wired with... Red, blue, and green <laughs> wires onto a uh, alarm clock battery, and Veronica is standing exactly twenty six feet away. Will she or will Perish she not? Perish in the flames. <laughs> <laughs> Defend your answer. No, that would be more like um, you know, like those AP yeah. tests we had to take. This is like if you take AP physics, they're like you're gonna need to watch the movie Heather's, and you're gonna need to justify Veronica's decision to not scurry away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we should be the ones writing ap tests <laughs> yeah. no it'll, it's like a joint you put to you put together like an ap physics student and like an ap like film mm-hmm. do they have that definitely high school? Not. probably not but <laughs> or like college you know you put together a, uh, a physics major uh-huh. and a film major and you're like you're we're, the two of you're gonna have yeah. to work this out <laughs> <laughs> but sorry back to the fashion of this film one of my favorite um tidbits about it was that literally anytime and anywhere that veronica is writing in her journal she whips out this monocle monocle i was like literally so like, fucking it, I, like i get it like when you're at home and it's like you okay. You're gonna be a little, a little more quirky. You're the main character. I get it. I get it. But like, she's literally like in school, like at her desk or like on the staircase. She is sitting down, like scribbling with like furiously while she has this monocle attached to her fucking eye. <laughs> Do the most, queen. I'm no, op- I'm no optometrist, uh-huh. but d- monocles 
Are those for people who only have one eye that's bad? I have you know no what I mean? idea. Like, I'm... If one eye can see fine, or, like, maybe, like, reading glasses or something. Can you have one eye, like, one eye that's fucked, that's I guess? Probably. You definitely... What is it? Or is it simply... Is it... Is it simply to serve the look of wearing a We're monocle? We're going to ask Google. Because ooh, if I was a drag queen, my name would be Monica Lewinsky. And I would dress up like Monica Lewinsky and I'd wear a monocle. And I would only do numbers about the I engagement. I love that. I think, yeah, I guess it's just to improve your eyesight. Like, why? Just wear gl- but like, wouldn't you have to close your Yeah, other that's how eye? it works. Yeah, just put on some fucking yeah, readers. Yeah, get a pair of fucking glasses, Veronica. So simply, all of y'all out there wearing monocles are doing it for the st- steampunk yes. fashion aesthetic y'all think you're a founding father when you put on that monocle and queen yeah. live your truth i'm not gonna stop i'm you. just saying if you're doing that for <laughs> for the founding father vibe you better be wearing a wig as well that's all i have to say <laughs> a, a white puffy speaking wig. of questionable oh. things that veronica does though do you think she like was really honestly like into the whole killing thing like she had to know yeah i think it was more like, she didn't feel as bad about it after the fact as she maybe mm-hmm. wanted to, and that kind of helped her justify mm-hmm. her actions. You can definitely take it into however you want to interpret the movie, whether she totally knew or whether she was completely out of the loop and was totally getting manipulated and gaslight. I could see how you could make the argument for any of them, but I think it's more like she was truly tricked into doing it. But after it happened, she's like, well, I did fucking hate them and I don't feel that yeah. bad. So let's keep like, it Like, the thing rolling. about it is, like, sh- like you said, she has this genius IQ. And then she's like, oh, yeah, these bullets that are just going to pierce the skin. Fucking idiot. <laughs> and this, this high school boy who is displaying nothing but, like, violent uh-huh. tendencies. She's like, I love and, him. And, like, just... <laughs> questionable behavior and he's like yeah we're gonna pull this sick prank where we pretend to shoot two yeah people. mind you like the first okay. like encounter she had with him he pulled out a bullet with full of blanks and pretended to shoot like two kids you would straight up go to right juvie. whack i mean my whole thing about it is like i was watching this and because the like they yeah they kill heather chandler with drano or whatever it's called and i was just sitting there and i was like how long would it take to actually kill someone with Drano. She, not a second before she has finished guzzling that Drano down, she is dead on the floor. Right. I was like, it hasn't even hit your stomach yet, girl. Are you Googling how long would it... <laughs> yeah. Well, because we're all about facts yes, and science yes, of course. on this pod. And I really would like to know, because yeah, she straight up, she like gr- gasps for huh. air, and then she falls yeah. to the ground, and she smashes through the... Like- like, Coffee maybe table. it, like, burnt a hole in her esophagus or something like that. That would make sense. This person says, long enough to know that you've done a horrible, horrible thing. Okay, that's not facts and science, but thank you. Drano is crystallized lie. Okay, well, let's... Okay, if a person drinks Drano, liquid Drano, it will not only burn everything it touches. I don't believe this person on Quora. This doesn't seem like a reliable source. No, no, definitely not. But no, that make, that makes sense, though. It probably, like, burnt a hole in her esophagus. Because I am thinking, like, you pour Drano down the drain and it totally like incinerates all the balls yeah. of hair down there so probably it was enough to make her pass out no I, I think it probably burnt a hole in her fucking throat and that's how she went down so fast I guess most people are saying that your reflexes would cause you to not be able to drink a not more than a sip Interesting. you know like, like huh. it's so it's so acidic and nasty that your reflexes would not like she guzzles Maybe this that should shit be down. on our AP test for like chemistry or biology. <laughs> How much Drano is a person gonna, able to drink? We're gonna pitch. We're gonna pitch an entire Heather's themed college board year. <laughs> to uh-huh. we're gonna pitch it. Every single test has something to do. Yeah. If with those others. if those fake bullets work. actually existed. What would the velocity rate of speed have to be for it to just <laughs> Does, puncture the skin? Engineering, <laughs> design some bullets. We probably shouldn't be asking kids no. to do weapons. Though, how but. many? How much dynamite would JD have actually needed to blow up the school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He also like made that in his house, and I'm like, boy, you just have. Well, sticks yeah, his of dad's dynamite a construction later. guy. Oh, because his dad blows up buildings. The one thing that Duh. I found really um, rather um, ridiculous about that scene is like dude i wouldn't even know how to get to the 
basement of my high school. Let alone like under the under the school cafeteria, the gymnasium. Yeah, in the, the boiler, boiler room. room. Like I couldn't tell you anything. I would I would maybe bet that our high school didn't even have you a think? basement. Our high school was built That's on true. a swamp. I think it probably had some rooms that were like locked or something. But I maybe really... who can say? Oh, a really fun Easter egg okay. in this movie is the scene after. Um, the scene after r- the date yes. that goes awry, when she goes into the mm-hmm. yearbook room to, and she's, they're t- asking her if she has any deep and meaningful poetry from Heather so they can put it in the yearbook in her suicide page spread. And that's when all the girls are like snickering, being like, ha ha ha, you suck two dicks at once. <laughs> I'd be clapping. <laughs> the, ra- <laughs> the boy in the red sweater who is asking her about Heather's poetry is Mr. Mosby from The Sweet no Life of Zach fucking and Cody. way. It's so funny. It's, he's, he has like one line and he's in it for a second. But if you ever watch Heather's again, the, the boy in the red sweater in the yearbook room is fucking Mr. Mosby. Oh I'm obsessed. my god. Oh, that's fucking outstanding. I love that. It's really good. It's also um pretty interesting that a lot of the actors in this didn't really no. go on to do much else. I know that um the Heather with the brown mm-hmm. hair, Heather Duke, she went on to um be on Beverly Hills mm. 90210. But the the two blonde Nothing. Heathers didn't really Christ- act much i know obviously winona Ryder and christian slater both became pretty that's big, so weird though because like i just is surprising I feel like christian me, yeah. slater like this is the biggest thing that he's done in my book but that's just maybe me not having seen like enough but i can't really think of a lot that he's done i feel like he probably did tv more yeah. than um films because i was looking at his like imdb page and nothing really stood out to me I know whenever he like pops up, it's like kind of a jump yeah, scare. No, to I me. get that. Um, well, he's in a lot of like early '90s hmm. type stuff yeah, that I've. He was never definitely seen. like on the front page of Tiger no. Beat for a while. <laughs> was he? I feel like Tiger Beat. Let, let's wait. Let's look up Christian Slater Tiger Beat because this, if this exists, it has oh, to go definitely. on Instagram. Is it there? Ah! Teen oh, close beat. enough. Oh, uh, no, that's no. Patrick Swayze. He was on... No, no no Tiger Beat. Damn. He, like, some, he did some, like, off-brand adjacent. Oh, close yeah, enough. He, teen Beat, Christian Slater, the hunkiest honey in Sherwood Forest. <laughs> Whatever that means. I don't know. Oh, my God. Do you remember... Did you ever read those, like, magazines when you were a kid? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I did. And they had the posters in the middle pages that you could rip mm-hmm. out and put on your wall, and they had holes in them because you had to rip through the staples. Definitely had, like, all the Twilight mm-hmm. ones from back in the oh, day yeah. uh, when they would do the Twilight I editions. had the Twilight ones. Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree with you there. I actually, I had a, now we're just talking about Twilight, I had a, a piano music book for the score of Twilight, and in the piano book, it came with posters of the that. characters so which I, like of course of course they know that the kind of person who's buying a twilight piano score book probably wants some fucking posters <laughs> could you play bella's lullaby <laughs> oh yeah you know it <laughs> so i don't think there's really a natural way to segue into this but the striking similarities between this movie and mean girls not only mm. are is Mean Girl the kind Mean Girls is kind of like the coming of age teen film that this movie is intentionally trying to like satirize, imitate kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Just the, yeah. the similarities are incredibly striking. The group of three popular girls, the one a new girl who gets dragged in, the whole scenario of it all. And I will tell you mm-hmm. that this is no coincidence. Heather's okay. was written by the older brother of the guy who directed Mean Girls. So Mark Waters wow. Yeah, Mark Waters and Daniel Waters brothers, one of them wrote Heathers, one of them directed Mean Girls. So that's why those two huh. movies feel so similar. This was uh, while I was digging around in the pits of like IMDB and stuff. I'm like, yeah, because I was thinking while I was watching this movie, I'm like, yeah, this is this is Mean Girls. Like you could play these two movies at the same time on top of each other. Yeah. And they basically follow the same structure. Yeah, it's like the same algorithm, pretty uh, much. But huh. just, yeah, the, the whole... No murder in Mean no. Girls, but... But you, just, like, the, having the three popular... The three Heathers and the <laughs> the Plastics are just yeah. irrefutably the same characters. Oh, for sure. 100%. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good one to, I guess, follow up Heathers with. If you yeah. had to do mm-hmm. a double that's, feature. That's what I was thinking. Like, this clueless, like, Heathers clueless Mean Girls is, like, a really good, mm-hmm. like, bang, bang, bang. 
yeah. to me. Do we want to get into it? Do we yeah, want to get yeah, into we the... can. Um, so okay. I, I would say yes, those two movies. Those two, or yeah. you definitely could also watch just like any John Hughes. I don't know, sixteen True candles, enough. some bullshit yeah. like that. I watched um, recently. I watched um, Saint Elmo's Fire again for the first time in ages. I won't lie. I kind of really. I feel it. like your mom loves that movie. <laughs> She she does she does. I was just I don't know. Did not hold my attention like most John Hughes movies can. Like Ferris Bueller is probably my favorite it's, one of his. Yeah, t- to me it's just like um, it's just a Breakfast Club two. Exactly. That's all. Saint Elmo's Fire is. Like, yeah. It's literally like the exact same cast. But if I had to suggest a movie to watch after this one. I'm gonna bounce off of the aesthetic of Heather's because I don't I don't feel like a dark comedy after, or well I guess you could, but sort of in the same vein. Um, and it's a movie that we've done before. Um, I'd suggest, but oh, I'm a cheerleader. Sure. I think they aesthetically line up really well, and I think it still has sort of that. I, I yeah, like I guess a dark comedy kind of feel to it, uh, which I think is good. And plus, it's like a crisp hour 25 minute movie so yeah, I, just think I would, it would also be a nice... argue that that's the whole like box office flop turned cult classic same mm-hmm. vibe um i feel you there i would say also aesthetically to me this movie makes me want to watch donnie darko um mm. like, See, i've never seen it it's like really two, like that's like two steps to the left you know like they're not quite comparable but uh-huh. it's also just like i'm like i just think jake gyllenhaal's really hot and he's displaying a lot of really questionable mental illnesses yeah. um so he's just christian slater <laughs> yeah right well but he's jake gyllenhaal yeah so exactly. he's a little bit more forgivable um, yeah of course but it's like it's like another one of those like oh my god i'm attracted to this school shooter kid fuck uh, yeah. kind of movies <laughs> fair enough fair enough yeah like are you are you picking jd to fuck and fuck mary kill are we gonna they're in high school get into this they're in high school oh shit yeah he was 19 in real life which is still like eh, yeah this is a little who, who can we actually do Fuck, Mary Kill this Essentially, week? Essentially, I think we could do the hippy-dippy English teacher who wants everyone to say kumbaya. Mm-hmm. We could do either of Veronica's parents. We could do JD's dad. Um, yeah, I don't really know how We're many really? adults we see. We don't really see a ton of adults in this movie. The priest? The pri- the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the priest. Yeah, who was, who was that actor yeah, in Beetlejuice? Yeah. <laughs> um. Damn, yeah, we can't. I don't know. I would say I guess, we, can do, we... we can do Veronica's mom, the JD's dad, and uh-huh. the hippie to be English teacher. Oh, I'm gonna kill JD's dad because he freaks me the fuck <laughs> out. No, I hate Also, him. you know if you fuck uh, him, there's gonna be some weird dialogue. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want that. I It's like, like JD, don't open your fucking mouth, like, if I had to fuck. <laughs> um... And then I guess I'd I'd fuck the hippy dippy English teacher because I want to marry Veronica's mom. She's, she I don't sucks know. though. Both of her parents He's, suck. Eh, I, I, didn't absolutely, hate I absolutely love those two scenes where the dialogue is exactly the same. Yeah. She sits down and they have pate. And the first uh-huh. time he's like, "Why do I read these damn spy novels?" And she's like, "It's because you're, you're an idiot." But then the next time he's like, "Why do I smoke these damn cigars?" Because you're an idiot. And she says, yeah. "Great pate, mom, but I got a motor." Both times. I love it. Funny. Mm-hmm. So, so would you marry the hippie yeah, English I think, teacher? Um, she just pissed me off. I don't like her either. I don't know. I might like you know that show, Mom Mom Swap, Wife Swap. Yeah, you know that show, Wife Swap. I might like Wife Swap my way into JD's life and like force him to go to therapy. Or, like, I'd, like, make him join the military or something fucked like that. You know? (laughs) I'd really get him straightened out in his last years before becoming an adult. So if Uh I marry JD's dad, maybe I can really crack the whip. I don't really think I'd be that good of a parent, though. So I I don't know if I could handle that TBH. So, actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna kill JD's dad. So he's an orphan now. I'm gonna... I guess I'll fuck (laughs) Veronica's mom and I'll marry the English teacher. Yeah, there doesn't... Yeah, unfortunately, there's not really a, a good... Trio because like obviously I want to marry Winona Ryder, but she's fifteen yeah. here, so we'll just have to wait. Cover a movie yeah. where she's of age. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, oh. and so what about food and drink? 
I'm a little stumped on this one. I didn't come to the table with anything. So um, the foods I'd that they mention in the movie, pate, they have of pate. Course. This is the second. So I noted that this is the second movie we've covered where somebody showers with all of their clothes on. And this is also the second movie we've covered, uh, Casino Royale, where Vesper just oh fucking chills in the God. shower. But like, as soon as Veronica the steps into sucking. the sh- <laughs> as soon as Veronica steps into the shower with all her clothes on, I'm like, are we doing this again, Vesper? <laughs> are you kidding? But this is also the second movie we've covered that like prominently features pate pate um so i just thought that was weird because then we had duck liver fantastic like, mr yeah, fox yeah yeah it was like duck liver goose donuts liver or something. Goose, or something yeah like it's, ba- it's just basically pate Ugh. but um, no so i yeah, would they- say do not fucking eat pate yeah. for this the only other and thing you could corn really nuts. do is, yeah get a slushy, a slushy. I, think, I think you should get a slushy uh here here's my suggestion here's my suggestion um you literally you go out to like your Seven Eleven or your Cumberland Farms if you're a native New Englander as we are, um, and you force yourself to buy one of like those me- like a like an actual piece of food that they sell, like a hot dog <laughs> or a piece of a pizza. corn dog. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And if if not, then like you can just do spaghetti because they talked about like oh, Veronica's yeah, spaghetti. favorite food is spaghetti, which also like maybe like. A hot take, but that's the lamest favorite meal you can yeah. fucking have. That's like a spaghetti with meal. A, <laughs> yeah, spaghetti with a lot of oregano. Shut the fuck up. That's your favorite <laughs> meal? Your, your parents bitch. regularly feed you pate. <laughs> yeah. I know you guys have the money for, like, some fancy dinners. And you're like, yeah, no, spaghetti is my shit. Fuck off. I would say, have you ever had one of those, like, wine slushies? Yes. Oh, yeah. that get is a like good idea. A, get like like a boozy slushy. They usually have them at liquor stores or like gas stations. Um, you can get like fruit punch ones and stuff, but I feel like they're too sweet. I personally, I like the wine slushies. Yeah, those are really good. You can. I've I've gone to like some um, like vineyards kind of thing, and they'll have them, which is really good. Wineries, say, whatever you call yeah, them. Yeah, I would say do a wine slushy, and then I would also say if you don't want to eat a food that's directly mentioned in the movie, I would say that you have to make snacks in accordance to the Heather's color scheme. So mm. you have to have a red, a green, a yellow, and a blue. Maybe just, like, separate M&Ms out by color or something. Yeah. Or, like, you know, four bowls of candy of, of those colors or something like that. I don't know. Get uh-huh. get fun with it. Dips, maybe? Like a yeah. red dip. I don't know what you do for blue. That's a little off. No, no, no. Maybe like blue. Have you ever had those on um, like blue tortilla chips? Yeah. You do like salsa. You do like salsa, queso. What's green? Like could some do like, sort of. I don't do know. Like, and then, they, well, there's like green salsas yeah, too. Yeah. And then like, like green chilies. Blue corn chips. So then you have every yeah. color. That's my, that's no, my little creative that. twist. Yeah. No, I, th- I, th- <laughs> I think that's good i think yeah i I like the idea of like a wine slushy and like just some spaghetti if you're really not feeling like putting the (laughs) effort in and spaghetti sounds like a heavy meal oh yeah i I could feel that (laughs) yeah you're taking a nap right after Mm, yeah yeah (laughs) but yeah what would you rate this i'm gonna give this movie an eight Mm. I do I do like it a lot for nostalgia factor because I feel like it's one of those movies that I like watched a lot while I was like really getting into like watching movies as a hobby mm-hmm. if that if you can say that yeah I don't know. no but, I, like, I definitely would say I watched this movie for the first time when I was maybe in like seventh or eighth grade and it's mm-hmm. definitely been a very regular staple in my life since then I think it holds up I like it a lot I can recognize the, its flaws as a yeah. as a piece of fiction I guess but. It cracks me up, and I like it, so I'm going to give it an 8. Yeah, I'm going to stick it with, like, a seven and a half. I think uh, over time, I've... I wouldn't say I, I've started to dislike it, but I just like it a little bit less. Well, when you're like, not 13 than... and on Tumblr, like... Exactly, exactly. So it's it's lost a little bit of its spark for me, but I still really enjoy it, and I have a fun time with the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh a lot of like those one liners do still crack me up. Um, so have you yeah, seen seven that, and a half. Um, that TikTok of the kid who played the little brother on Lizzie <laughs> McGuire? I'm really, I'm really looking, looking forward, forward to, to cracking, cracking up. up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's me at the beginning of every movie. I'm really looking forward to cracking up. <laughs> oh, exactly. Uh, but well, thank you guys for listening. Yeah, thanks for joining us this week with Heather's. Um, next week, we'll, we will be wrapping up Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss Month. So 
look out yeah. for that. Make sure definitely to answer our poll question, our lunchtime poll. You get $5 million on the two days before the world blows up. What do you do with it? And um, we'll send somebody who gives us a good answer. We'll randomly draw one and we'll send you some merch. Mm-hmm. So also merch, we say this at the end of almost every episode, but if anybody has any interest, desire, inkling about t-shirts, hats, mugs, anything, I love to make shit. So if, if people are like, yeah, we would love, I don't even know what I could, but I make all of our merch right now, all of our tote bags, our pins, mm-hmm. everything like that. So if people want more shit, I would love to make that happen for you. So also make sure to check us out on social media. All of our links are in the description below. And please continue to send us in your movie suggestions. It's our favorite thing. We keep a big running list of everything you ever send us. Whether you send us a five paragraph essay about why it's your favorite movie, or if you just DM us the words Osmosis Jones, like (laughs) I still write it all down. (laughs) Um, and that's why, like, we really were excited to talk about this one today because we knew a handful of people had reached out um, wanting us to cover it. So definitely send us in any movie you want us to watch, cover, talk about. We love to hear from you. And um, I love my dead gay son. Yeah.